Okay, so a while ago we mentioned that we want to do a Coyote Bronco and uh, as you guys know, the Bronco is being released today, actually, and we made this obviously before today, so we're not sure what the new Bronco is going to be like. Something built with the toughness of an F-Series and the spirit of a Mustang. I hope they don't screw it up like Chevy screwed up the Blazer. Hi guys. Hello. Let's do this. The Blazer screams modern art. Because there's a lot of anticipation for the Broncos. Super cool vehicles. Um, and unfortunately, we are stuck with ones like this in our area. We want to take an older Bronco and put a nice V8 Coyote in it because I think the only thing that might be a disappointment is that it's going to be an inline four or a V6. So rather than starting with a body and putting an engine in it later, we want to get a nice clean body when the borders open again. And in the meantime, we picked up this sweet ass Mustang. <laughs> Been in the back of a couple of videos and nobody seems to care about the Mustang. And that's fantastic, because I don't care about this car at all. No emotional feelings towards a 2005 V6 Mustang. But what you guys don't know is that it's got a nice boss underneath the hood. The story with this is, is that it was somebody else's project and they just couldn't get it running and we picked it up for a very good price. So we do know that it sat for um, three years, I think, before we picked it up. It's got uh, Pilot Sport Cup worn down tires. So these tires were off of something else, but the rims look brand new, 20 inch rims with Brembo brakes on there that I don't think have ever stopped the car uh, faster than what you can push it. It's got a six speed Tremec in it, as we were told. The interior is nice and clean, and it's got a nice uh, touch screen nav radio in it that's not really worth a whole lot, but is worth something. It's got this sick ass body kit in it. Uh, <laughs> it's got the window delete and the, uh, the scoop there that does nothing. And they plasti dip this thing to make it look as horrible as possibly so nobody would steal it. The engine, does look brand new. There is no corrosion on it. There's nothing to give us any worry. Um, and we did turn it over, just like turned it a hair just to see if um, it was seized up from sitting and no, it wasn't. So um, we haven't tried to do anything with it yet, but we're gonna dig into it. First thing I wanna do is pull the spark plugs out, put a little bit of oil down the cylinders, let it sit for a while um, before we turn it over in case there was any moisture or anything. We don't wanna score any of the cylinders. Um, they got an oil filter relocate. Um, they've got these <laughs> this strut tower <laughs> that must be <laughs> super efficient. Um, they still have the stock fuel rail and the regulator before the injectors, which um, is not the way that I would do it. So <laughs> um, their wiring techniques as to why it was not running. <laughs> this does have a JEGS wiring harness for it, regardless. We're gonna rip the whole wiring harness off of it again and put a Holley Terminator on it. The Coyote is a lot more advanced than the LS is, meaning that it's got a computer to make it run. It's got a computer for the coils and it's got the computer for the twin individual cam, VVIT, something like that, anyway. But regardless, we're gonna be pulling a lot of the stuff off again and starting over. We got new fuel rails, um, we'll probably keep the old injectors for now, um, and then we'll put the regulator on the return side rather than the feed side. And I did turn the key and it's got fuel pissing out everywhere. The fuel is old. We don't wanna run any of that through the injectors, so we'll have to drain the tank, run new uh, uh, fuel lines and a new pump. And then this thing should be fun to uh, light the tires up. If we run into too many major issues, meaning clutch or drive shaft. We don't want to spend too much money on this. We'll just end up yanking this out and putting it in a Bronco. But for now, we'll try to get it running in the Mustang and have some fun with it. Here we go. First thing I see is that none of the coils are bolted down. Um, the, I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. When you find stuff like that, you're like, what happened? Did or did they do a compression test because something didn't work or did they put oil down the cylinders or 
Did they forget to tighten something? And now I really don't know what to think just yet. So, so, so red oil is good because that's ATF, not engine oil. And either the spark plugs are really loose or Ford uses a weird size spark plug and this doesn't fit. Nope, spark plug is loose. So the spark plugs were not tight. Soaking wet, good. Yeah, so same story on all of them. No surprise, we yanked the other side over. All right, so we know it's already kitted out um, and it doesn't run, so it's already seam already. So, I think we do the full two revolutions, making sure no pistons are hitting valves, anything silly. I think I'm okay with that. There's a little box. That's not normal for Ford, so they did something there. So this is Ford Racing, so AC, that's important, PCM, intercooler, fuel pump, start, and fan. So that'll be interesting to see what lights up when. Um, Okay, see if it makes any funny noises. Just probably check if the key's on. What's going on there? Oh, it got a light? Yeah. Oh, oh, that must be a Ford thing. If this bulb goes out, that one goes out. There it goes. <laughs> nice. You just have to touch it and it fixes itself. So what I see here is a green wire that's taped here. And then one of those little blue connectors, probably hot wiring the, the fuel pump. Um, so we'll disconnect the fuel pump all together. If you go to the front here, we've got some really nice wiring underneath here, which is possibly why it's not running. We have a switch here called a PIAA, which must only stand for pain in the ass automatic. Um, I don't know what that's about. Um, and then we have some more wires laying on the ground here. Um, and then some more stuff dangling down underneath there. It should run. So it's got the proper connection to uh, T into <laughs> the, the pink wire, I imagine, on the fuel pump. And then it's got a return system put in, uh, tapped into the tank. So the tank is probably full of shavings, which should be awesome. Okay, key is beeping, lights are coming on, oh, steering is toast. <laughs> so I'm not turning over at all. It says my gas cap is loose. I hear a relay clicking underneath down there. But nothing's happening. Just going to hotwire that starter and see what kind of noises it makes. This is disconnected all together. Let's plug those in and then see if it starts. Maybe that's it. It goes top. Okay, then this one must go down below. Maybe it's just something's not going on in there. That wire probably wasn't important. That doesn't sound good. Okay. okay, so we've got some oil spraying out. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. That sound is a little off. It might just be because the spark plugs are out and that's the air coming out of the spark plug hole and then hitting a bigger chamber coming through the cylinder head. So I'm gonna put spark plugs back in again.
sounds a little better. All right, so I did a quick inventory of what I need to get this thing running. I put the Holly fuel rails in it, very straightforward. I've got the fuel line coming in. I'm waiting for a couple fittings to attach it to the factory steel line. Then it loops around the back, comes out the front here, and then goes to the regulator, which would be right over here. Yeah, I had to do it that way because the smaller 6 and fitting won't get in the way of the heater line. I still can't, still can't close this, but I can stick a bolt in here and hold that down. Um, draining the fuel out, so just letting the pump run into here. I think the tank is pretty empty. But you can see how yellow that is. And by smell, it was way worse than the man lift. Okay, that pump is making plenty of noise, but that's because there's no seat over top either. Oh. Oh, that's kind of like me on like uh, four in the afternoon on a hot day. I feel like I have to pee, but, but nothing's really coming out. I think that's empty. There was a all of maybe 10 liters in that tank. Okay, so I think I have everything I need to make it run. Um, I was waiting for a couple fittings for the fuel system. And so what I did was put the Holly fuel rails on it. Very straightforward, very simple. Um, ran my fuel lines in. The way it worked at the back, it didn't really fit. So I ran them to the front. Um, I had to move this coolant pipe over to make this fitting fit. Um, and then I just, the hose wasn't long enough. So I disconnected the heater and just ran the, from head to head. Um, I'm gonna put a clamp on that yet. I've got new spark plugs. So these are the, uh, what they called for i guess my part supplier told me so i got that bank done and i got that bank done the fuel tank is empty i got some fresh fuel uh basically what i want to do now is bring it back to the day they left off so um i figured they had new spark plugs their fuel was good um i'm trying to eliminate some of their stupid mistakes like really poor fuel system so uh, we'll um, flush the system, run the return into a jerry can, uh, prime it a couple times, and then shut it off. We'll, um, then we'll try and start it and see what, what kind of shape it's in. It sounded okay turning over, nothing clanging and banging. I did take the oil filter. The oil filter was loose. Um, so when I was priming it over last time, it leaked a little bit. Um, I tightened all the fittings. The fittings were loose, so I tightened the oil filter. Um, I did pour the oil out to see if there was any um, obvious stuff in there. There was not. Oil level, oil is nice and clean and up to the proper height. There's coolant in there, and it's at the right level. So we'll put the spark plugs in on that bank, purge the fuel system, and see what we bought. It's getting exciting. And then we'll just rip all of this stuff off put a holly on it regardless because it's so much simpler and then drive it in the shop. Oh, we still got to put that thing in too because I can't steer it. Here we go. All right, I am like genuinely nervous about about <laughs> trying to start this car because I feel like I've bad mouthed Ford so much. This thing is just instantly gonna erupt into a giant ball of flame and take up the Audi on top of me and my, my GTO beside me, the C10 over there. And all I'm doing is purging the fuel system before I hook it up to the regulator. Gonna pull the pin now. Fuel pump does not sound happy. All right, good flow out of the return. We'll hook up that return. Turn it over. Because we still won't start. We'll check it for leaks, obviously, before we do anything. But that pump doesn't shut off either. That's just stupid. It needs to run for five seconds and then shut off. So. Number one issue, and we haven't even started yet.
Apparently my battery's dead. It wasn't the battery, I don't think it was the battery, it's the double wolf clips. <laughs> it's like pinches the battery wire. It's probably a bad connection. Okay, I'm put a charger on it. Did try to start there. Pouring out the bottom. Stage two, I can leave it running and walk out. smoky in here and that's fine because I also poured a pile of oil down the cylinder let it sit for a couple months okay so I started smoking under here and this loom was laying right on the exhaust so this would be like the the main engine loom <laughs> of course of course it's laying on the exhaust I don't so it ran and it's running why did it not move all right let's get that tied up and then fire it up again and see because it really started to surge there and that is enough to make me rip all of this crap out uh, here we go <laughs> first start let's go for first drive um, yeah brakes are a little rusty like they're not bad they're not rusty they're like dusted they're, they're kind of rusty save those Brembo pads clean it up <laughs> could stick it on a lathe and clean them up you just hit the brakes kind of does the same thing and then we can actually take a good look at it outside when we bought it it was winter so um, we didn't look at it too long <laughs> So, give her a little pressure wash. Uh, Aaron was looking in the trunk. There's some goodies in the trunk. Always exciting. And then we gotta figure out the story because the steering's messed up too. I think I can get out the door because it's like a slight, just a slight curve to the left. And then we can diagnose and kind of figure out a game plan because even though it runs, I don't, because the steering's messed up, I don't think they ever had it on the road. Maybe just to drive it from one shop to the next, but I think it's got its issues. So let's, uh, let's try to find those other issues. Here we go. Okay, and there she sits. Made it this far. Now uh, that the O-ring around my coolant hose, it popped off. You can see, see the O-ring blew out right there. 
Um, and that squeal, I don't know what the squeal is. We're here gonna let it cool down. Maybe we'll wash it off and then put it right back inside on the hoist. I'll uh, get the hoist clean. And then we'll get set up to throw the holly on there just so that we get some better monitors. It is running, but stuff like that is going to be troublesome down the road along with got data link there looks like there's something going on there um but that stuff is no good much of those connectors so we're gonna clean that up get rid of that nice six speed and then uh go from there it's a it's a me lin me a lin miche okay so it's got a squeal it also has a leak and that's power steering it makes me think that there's something wrong with the power steering pump now this belt is extremely loose and that pump actually moves back and forth so I don't know if that's I don't know if that's a normal Ford thing or what I think I can peel this belt off by hand so if I can peel the belt off, and it's probably slipping, that's probably my squeal. And I should be putting the kids to bed. I just gotta, the squeal's bothering me. So I'll just pop that off real quick, real quick, and I'll fire it up. Rev it out. When in doubt, rev it out. Is it? All right. Sleep on it. See what happens tomorrow. Either transmission. I guess I can take the other belt off. In case it's water pump or something, but I doubt it. Hmm. See you in the morning. New day. The sun is shining. Um, and I had a night to think about what to do with this Mustang. For now, let's see if we can fix all the problems that the Mustang had in one day. Still very happy about the buy because we're looking forward to taking that engine out and putting it into a Bronco. They plastic dip the sunroof, like, I don't know what, what to think of it. What I do know is that it definitely was running um, and I saw this black on the fender, so I think they did a burnout at one point. And the exhaust uh, is looks like it got a heat cycle on it for sure. So it was running. I don't think it was ever on the road. We have to fix the steering um, because I can't even move it and it's leaking. Um, that might be where the squeal is coming from. I don't think so, but regardless, I can't even drive it through the yard to put it on that hoist. So it's very, very short hours on that engine because the steering is no good the way it is. The brakes are no good the way they are. And when you're installing brand new brakes, you figure that you would get them working. So, um, and by working, I mean, you don't put $2,500 brakes on there make, without making sure that the brake lines are good. So I don't think this thing has ever been on the road. So good news right off the bat. I just took the water pump pulley off and no squeal. So before it overheats, I'll put her back in the shop. But I think that uh, it was already squealing before, so. Love that sound, I, I gotta admit. I'm thinking everything is new except the alternator. Probably the alternator squeaking. Put the belt back on again and drove it back inside and the squeal came back. Whew, it's not the number four main bearing running dry. Right. Let's put a big engine in a car that we spent a lot of money on 
and then use every plumbing fitting I can find in the back of my truck. <laughs> Me with only truck sockets. They'd be smart, they put it in the trunk, right? Trim, brand new O2 sensor. Sweet! Money in the bank. Money in the bank. Jegs for 30-17. So I imagine the swap was done in 2017. On an 05, it's still a 12-year-old car. Brakes. Somebody wants some brakes off of a 05 Mustang. Used eBay. He's good for killing somebody. Receipt from McDonald's. That should be on the bottom of the car, I guess. Oh, look, they must have bought the wrong ones. I got two brand new O2 sensor. You got a pulley for something. That's your power steering. Another caliper. Oh, trailer. In case we're gonna pull something. We got Rock Auto, April 2017. More and more is starter cable. Who pays $114 for a starter cable? Oh, oh. Ah, just a 19 mil socket on a Johnson bar that's snap on. If it's rusty, you can bring it back. Another socket? No, it's 10 millimeter. Hey, 10 millimeter. Oh, just some dirty gloves, OJ's gloves. I don't want to touch those gloves. Oh, there's the top half of the fuel cap. More sockets. What's that one? 11. But no socket for the rims. Shit. Stop yelling at me, Gary. I'm getting lots of fluid out of the bleeder. I don't know why we don't have brakes, Gary. Stop yelling at me. They're $2,400 brakes. I don't understand. <laughs> you ever hear that? But there are more money than brains? Yeah, that brake kit, that Brembo brake kit, I think I saw it online for $2,400. Let's put the right caliber on the left and the left on the right. Okay, so this is the U-joint that goes on the end of the rack and pinion. Square on one end, triangle on the other. Easily comes off, but you can't, I called three different suppliers in Canada, can't get this U-joint on its own. They call this non-serviceable, and um, even though it pops right off, they want you to buy the steering shaft that comes with it for $430. Now, if you're wondering why Ford didn't go into bankruptcy, it's because of bullshit like this. $430 for this little piece right here. So, um, non-serviceable, you know what that means. We're gonna service it because we just need it to bomb around for a little bit. Anyway, we'll knock this apart. We'll see if we can get the cups out. We'll see if we can grease it. It's fine one way. It's, it's got a, see the clunk? It goes into it so the needles are out. Um, this side is okay. So we'll, we'll see what we can do. Here we go. Six four Ford here. Luckily, everything on this truck is brand new because it didn't make a hundred thousand miles before it blew up. So, we'll grab this U joint right there. I already cut the one end off. We'll take this U joint off. It's nice and flexible because it's barely been used. And see if we can make something work. Here we go. Nice. So the one end is rectangular and matches. Um, so I just need to take this U joint off and put that, or put that yoke, put this yoke on there, try to do that without wrecking the um, needles. Okay, so I cut the one you joint off, knocked the two cups out, filled them up with grease. Now we take our good U-joint, 
take our shitty U joint, stick them in there, and stick it through, and try to put the cup onto the piece already without losing any of the bearings. And if it's already in, then you can press it in. As long as this U joint doesn't come out, you're not going to lose any of the needles. If you're missing one needle, it allows them to slide off, and that's it. Oh, let's try this one. Yeah, that one worked good. I'll pop this one in first. No, not okay. This is frustrating. What's even more frustrating is when you didn't do it wrong. All the needles are still in place. Okay, so pulled out every needle, greased the back side of it, then cleaned the needles and put them back in again. Pressed one almost all the way in, just enough so that I can get my other U joint in there, which is also cleaned. Then put it in there, nice and carefully. Making sure that each needle is at the back. If it doesn't work, I'm gonna lose my shit. <laughs> Been at this for about an hour. Okay, so that was a little bit frustrating because I've done lots of U-joints, but never these non-serviceable ones. And the issue was, if you squeeze them at all, you deform the cup and it will not spin. So I ran out of U-joints. I had no more U-joints. Um, so what I did was I grabbed the, the green truck outside there. This is the steering shaft out of a Chevy 2500 truck. And the U-joint at the top here, this has a, an aluminum uh, yoke on it. So I just took my cutters or my zip cut and I just cut the yoke off and then I kept the cups that were brand new and pressed them into the yoke. Then I took that U-joint cup that never was squeezed before because I cut the old yoke right here and right here, knocked the cap off and then I just pressed them in and now we have a perfectly good U-joint. So rather than giving Ford $400, it now has GM parts in it. I didn't record all that because I'm not gonna lie, that was extremely frustrating. And uh, then I went away for a little bit and had a coffee. And um, yeah, so sorry that the footage wasn't there, but it was really just me swearing for like 40 minutes. Okay, so the way they had the steering is they've got the power steering reservoir right here, going to nice, um, and fittings, nice and strong, sturdy hose going to the feed. And then coming out, the high pressure, they went to this, um, this rubber hose with a hose clamp. <laughs> I think it's a better idea that we install this proper power steering line, although this went to the original um, power steering pump. So what we're going to do is that 90 down there, we're going to straighten it out. We're gonna get the hose to come up here, then we're gonna bend this one into a 90 and weld this fitting right here onto that hose. And then this fitting will still go make a nice 90 to the top of that pump. That blue fitting right there will be brand new. And then we'll use, it's okay to use rubber hose for the return as it goes through the cooler and then back again. My cooler's not doing too well. Uh, radiator got hit there a little bit. I got hit there a little bit. But um, we'll get rid of these fittings, which are loose. Oh, oh, this is just one of those tie-through things. Anyway, <laughs> a lot of stuff here that didn't need to be there. We'll clean it up. Here we go. Okay, there's the line. Not unlike what it used to be. I'm gonna get Vince to take that. How's it going, Vince? All good. Yeah. I don't know if we can put that on the Mustang. That's not going to fit any of the other craftsmanship that they uh, that they're doing. That looks amazing. Thank you. Oh yeah, that's what happened. 
Steering's buttoned up, and Luke just picked up his skid steer and stopped by one of the stores I know is in his town that has the right socket. A TA7719. Let's see if they torqued the lug nuts. Of course they did. I'm sure they would have. I think they did. My little stubby still took it off. It fits, the back ones are on upside down too. I don't know what they were thinking. Um, there are rare instances where you put your your brake bleeders down. The issue is that you have to bleed it, pressure bleed it, by forcing the air all the way up back into the master. Um, it's common in airplanes and stuff because the airplanes are so much higher than what the brakes is. It's difficult to take that air and push it all the way down. So they bleed it with the brake bleeders down at the bottom and then push all the air up to where the master is. Um, not really common on cars and I'm not sure why they did it. Um, they also didn't have room to put the brake and the flex line on so they left that loose. That should have been a hint. But they also did the rear calipers on upside down. So um, that being said, do we really want to drive this car? <laughs> Who am I kidding? We're going to beat the tar out of this thing. Okay, time to rip this stuff out. And honestly, they were so close. Um, this is a complete standalone system from Jags, I guess. So this, uh, I think I saw it online for 1700 bucks for the computer and 270 for the wiring harness. Couple things I don't know what's going on. Switch, these T connectors suck. It's even got two outputs for a fuel pump. So for two pumps when you wanna go all out, but we are going to pull it out of here. So here we go. It's a little bit sharp there. Oh, look at that nice new starter. And that, that wire that is just kind of wrapped around there. Let's see. Oh, they're so close. They did do the twisty twisty. So I will have to undo that bolt. You got starter wires laying on the exhaust. That's awesome. That's that's a good way to burn your entire project down all at once. What's the insurance like on this? Interesting. I am really enjoying this. This is the original power steering cooler off of the Mustang and it had, I think, half inch lines going uh, in and out through the cooler. Now, um, the return on the rack is 3 eighths, so their attempt to fix that is to use some sort of step down. They, they jammed a half inch line on here and they took this line and they, they Loctited a rubber hose on there with a hose clamp. So, um, Funny thing is that the power steering cooler off the F450 only has 3 8 lines going in and out. So we'll just mount this one because it wasn't damaged uh, here. This one's still in good shape. So um, other than some of the, I think it looks like a little bit of suit 
probably from a leaking intercooler. So and then we can use these lines to go to our return on the canister and the steering rack. So here we go. Okay, so I got all my leaks fixed finally. Uh, engine oil, uh, rerouted the lines, um, power steering and coolant. With it being a manual, that should protect the engine pretty decent. From what I gather on this car is they did get it running. Uh, they did put the brakes on upside down so, and it didn't have steering. So um, they never actually drove it anywhere. I think they did one burnout. Uh, there was no gauges working inside the car. So unless they had the OBD reader, the system that they had on it does not communicate um, with the engine harness. There's nothing between the um, body wiring harness and the engine management system. So I think what they were trying to do here, this is probably the one that goes into the dash. And they were probably trying to figure out which one was the oil and, and temperatures, what I'm guessing, but they never actually drove it anywhere. Now we bought this car strictly for the engine. This engine is coming out and going into Bronco. That's what we want to do. That's what's going to happen. We kind of do want to drive this thing a little bit. Um, we'll put the Holly on in the next episode. And then the only thing left is suspension. They did drop it and I don't know what they did, but I'm sure whatever they did, they did it wrong. So we'll, we'll probably put a suspension in it and then just drive it for a little bit, have some fun with it. Um, and then Scott said he wants this car. So after we pull the engine tra and transmission out, uh, Scott from Northdown, who does all my engine rebuilding, said that he wants to build a V10 supercharged for this car. Um, he's got a soft spot for Fords. Um, one, they're, they break a lot, so that's how he's putting all his kids through college. Um, and two, he says they are a better engine, so hopefully uh, we do have another Coyote in the shop that we bought for parts. So we would like to tear one down and see exactly why he thinks it's better than an LS. I can guarantee you that LS is cheaper, um, but we both don't want to drive an ugly car around, so he might get his buddy to paint it. I'm just going to kind of paint the engine bay so it doesn't look like ass and then uh, see if we can uh, pressure wash the plastic dip off and then maybe paint it. So comment down below is what you color you think we should paint it. And then the next video, we'll get it running with the Holly. We'll take it for its first drive. We'll get those brakes bled and then uh, have some fun with it, light up the tires and then um, put some new rubber on it and see if we can get this thing safety and get Aaron out of his four door Honda Civic and into a two door Mustang Boss 302. So if you have a Bronco, um, definitely let us know. We can go on Facebook and Craigslist and whatever just as well as you can. We don't need that. If you know your neighbor's got one in a barn that's not listed, if you have one that you know what you've got in your garage and you thought maybe now it's time to sell it because I'm not doing anything with it, we are looking for a clean, preferably white Bronco, pre-1990, and I don't care if it's 89 or into the 70s. We're not going into the first gens because they're just way too expensive. Uh, I don't want to paint it. I want it to look presentable on the outside. Uh, so definitely from the southern um, states, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, um, California, any of those areas and a decent interior. I really don't want to do the interior. Uh, I prefer something with blown head gaskets, a blown transmission, no tires, um, things like that. But the body, I don't really want to touch kind of like what we did with the F350. We want to focus on the mechanical aspect and not get into paint like the GTO because nobody cares about us painting a vehicle. <laughs> Here we go. If you do have one, uh, sh shoot us an email with some pictures. If, the, if it needs a pile of work, we'd rather spend a little bit more than painting a vehicle or doing interior. You get the point.